Internet of Things. Um, this is an introduction, and so it is more general than wireless. They will, I will give you the whole idea of the Internet, and then they will go through one, one by one many, many different wireless protocols which are related to IoT. So five things we'll talk about. What are things? Why businesses are so much um, interested in IoT right now? And um, what are the research challenges? Why the academics like us are interested in IoT? And then we go into the recent um, new protocols for IoT. So what are things? Basically, the definition of a thing is anything which is not a computer, which means this table, the pen, the phone, light, these are all not computers. And why we distinguish things from other, from anything else, non-things? Because up until like you know, last year or two years ago or four years ago, all the computers were interneted. Every computer had a network. So now we have covered all the computers. So where do we make money from next? And so everything non-computing is a thing. Okay? So we are going to connect everything. Electrical and non-electrical. And so that includes phones, watches, thermostats, cars, electric meters, sensors, clothing, band-aids, and TV. Okay? And so anything, anywhere, anytime, anyway, anyhow. Everything will be connected. Five ways. <clears throat> so this is already connected, and this is what we are going to connect. And if you count how many things are connected, only less than 1% are connected. Actually, that number can keep going down as you count more and more things. And um, so there is this market, there is this opportunity to connect 99% of the things in the world. From 10 billion today to 50 billion in 2020. And, um, and then the opportunity in dollar terms, 14 trillion over 10 years. And actually, that number is always an understatement because every year the number goes up. Okay? And every time the projection comes in, it is more than the previous one. Right? So 14 trillion must have been at some time, and the references are here. Third in the list of top 10 strategic technologies by Gartner, after mobile devices, mobile apps, but before the cloud, and also known as Internet of Everything by Cisco. Cisco calls it Internet of Everything, IOE. And IBM calls it a smarter planet. Because if you see those words, they are all IoT. So today we have a smart grid, which is Internet of Electric Power Supply, smart health, smart homes, smart cities. Smart industries, smart TV, smart watch, smart car, and smart cab. The wine bottle, I mean, actually, the wine cock, wine, you know, right? Everything is smart. And what that means is they can connect. And um, it is interesting that in the old days, when somebody was smart or something was smart, that means you give them a 2023, some number, random number, and another, they could add very fast. They were very smart, right? Then came the time of storage when somebody could remember any vague thing, you know, you could ask them any question, they will remember it. Memory storage was smartness. But today, smartness is not computing or storage. It's been networking. If you can connect, you are smart. So smartness is networking. Because if you are networked, if you can communicate, you can always get the job done. Okay? So it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> All right? For success. And so this is the past smartness. This is the current smartness. In fact, I have the other one which I, I, I didn't put the right cartoon here. Basically, think about a person, you know, with hundreds of books on the desk. He's not very smart because he's not connected. On the other hand, think about a person with one little smartphone in his pocket. They are smart because they can find the answer right away, right? Because they're connected to Google. And Google worries about 
the other things which are storage and computing. You just have to do the communication. All right, so why is IoT happening now? Well, there are several recent developments that made it possible that was not possible before. IoT requires three things. It requires sensing, it requires communication, and it requires computation. Now, sensing was basically has become very cheap recently only, okay? I mean, you know, we started working on sensor network about 19, 9, 99, or maybe 2000, year 2000, 15 years ago, and now the sensors are, you know, dime a dozen, really dime a dozen. If you, if you want to buy a dozen sensors, you can buy a couple of cents on Amazon. So, so the sensors are very cheap. Communication, now with the smartphones and things like that, we can communicate very fast, very cheap. And computation with the cloud, very cheap too. And so basically, micro sensors have become available, which are you know, temperature sensor, moisture sensor, pressure sensor, air quality sensor, you name it, there's a sensor for it. Tags, RFIDs, so these are other kinds of sensors actually. RFID, for example, if I put an RFID on this table, then you can figure out where the table is by just scanning it. And um, so then this, this is able to communicate. Okay, so all the packages on the internet, all the packages are not on the internet, on the ships. All the packages in the stores, all the, all the shirts and clothes and pants in the stores, they're all labeled now. And, and they can be kept track of by the network. So the, so the tags are also sensors, right? They, they, in some sense. Third thing that has happened is energy efficient communication. So now we have we have networking technologies, and that is what we will talk about in this course mostly, that allow you to communicate with very little battery power. You can have one battery for a year. Okay, that was not possible before, but now it is possible. And we will talk how that is done. Bluetooth, Jigbee, and PAN. Computing has become very cheap. There are microprocessors which are very, very fast. And, and Raspberry Pi for 25 bucks, you can buy a whole computer. Intel Galileo, same thing. And Arduino, same thing. Okay, you can, if you have not played with these things, you need to. Cloud computing is there now. And with very little or no, you can do very, very large jobs. Money. Open a small operating systems. Operating systems are free. Linux is being used everywhere. And so because of all this, those creating sensing, communication, and computation has become very cheap, all three. So suddenly we have this opportunity for IoT. And really the main reason is, is the dollar. They all run behind the dollar. If somebody throws us the dollar, they just run behind them. And that's what professors do, that is what the businesses do, that is what everybody does, right? So here is the interest in, in IoT. If you see the Google Trends, and there are two different graphs on Google, one for IoT and one for Internet of Things. The same, but some people are searching for IoT, some people are searching for Internet of Things. Suddenly it took a dive up here, point D. And actually Google tells you what, why it took a dive up, and that is the day when Google buys, and Google bought Nest. Nest is a thermostat company. And they made a thermostat which is Wi-Fi enabled. And Google bought it for $2 billion. Can you imagine? Put a Wi-Fi card in a, in a thermostat and get sold for $2 billion. This guy is really smart. The guy who sold the company. Okay? And as soon as Google put $2 billion, everybody else started putting billions of dollars into this market. And if you remember the, I don't have the Gartner chart, but if you remember the Gartner chart, Everything starts from the universities and basically research and then goes into the, this one. So this had already happened by this time almost like two years ago. Universities were working on the technologies like IO, like Bluetooth or things like that, you know, developing protocols that they're energy efficient. And so how, why did that happen? And that happened because the government started putting money. So in 2009, Obama put $4 billion for smart grid. $4 billion can put all the professors, you know, wake up, you know, sleep, sleep, and suddenly everybody is working on a smart grid. Okay? 
And if you remember, see, the thing is you have to keep noticing this thing. Every two years or one year, the president comes up with some plan, and, and the rest of the world just follows it. So it's not good with 2009, then he came up with big data, then he came up with some. Um, right now, this year, the, the logo is computer science for all. Okay? So everybody will become computer scientist. So there's a lot of money being put into computer science education. Every computer science department is expanding by like factor of five, six, ten. So you guys are in good hands. Okay, if you're looking for a job. <laughs> because you are computer scientist. But um, basically, this is what brings up. Brings up um, uh, the thing, you know, every year they decide what area to invest in. And he comes up with two words, and, and then we follow. So in 2009, it was smart grid. Smart grid brought up this whole issue. At the same time, European European actually started something called Internet of Things. They really had a research called Internet of Things, and they did a, they did a survey in 2009 on what is happening in the what is the latest in the Internet. And they said, oh, European people are doing Internet of Things, but I don't think really go, it will go anywhere. Okay? And so we call it Internet of European Things, because this is not for US. But now, you know, we are doing it every year. So in some sense, they are ahead of us in this. 17 million in European funding in FP7, and then um, in, in, in the United States, there are lots of agencies just put out of money. And now, you know, there is no list. I mean, basically, every country is spending on IoT. So smart grid, which is actually the beginning of IoT, is that the smart grid is the power grid. So the power is generated someplace, and it comes to your home. And so they thought, why don't we make it internet connected so that we can control it sitting from one place? The whole thing, from generation to transmission to conversion to delivery, including reading your meters at home. Okay, and now smart grid exists because now my meter is read on the internet. I get reading our, our my electric meter from the phone from the electric company by email every week. I told them that I'm concerned about my electric bill. They said, okay, we'll let you know every week how much you are spending, and I get an email every week. You can get that same thing. So clearly, they are not going to come to my house every week and, and read the meter. They're just reading it over the internet. And not only electric meter, the gas meter, the water meter, everything is internet connected now. I don't know about the water meter, but the gas meter I know because the gas meter guy came and, and, and he started working on something. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm just putting this transmitter on it. You know, basically, he was connecting to the internet. Okay? And so a smart grid is that idea, is that um, with Internet connection, you can find where the problem is, where the load is, how to, you know, transmit more power from here to there, and so on and so forth. You can load balance. And the meters actually do help. I mean, you know, that weekly reading that I get does help me reduce my cost. Believe it or not, my bill has gone down after that weekly thing started coming by 25%. Because now I know what I did and what, what I actually do. So, you know, that helps. And efficient cryptographic communication between service stations and control stations. So basically now they can talk. Protocols for publishing and subscription and subscribing of the system data. So all of this research was done as part of from the smart grid research. And now there are business opportunities. There are companies that make money in sensors, companies that make money in microprocessors, make money on the on the data link, which is wireless equipment, on the systems, on the data analytics, analyzing the data, and on the applications of this data. It turns out there is more and more money in this direction. If you want the most money, applications, and analytics, and then systems, and then something. Sense of people are making the least amount of money. Okay? Where are you thinking about this startup? And so the, as you can see from this chart, Really, there's a lot of money on the data analytics. And that's why Google paid $2 billion, not for that Wi-Fi card inside a the thermostat, because now Google knows when you are home and you're not home. Okay? If the temperature is up, you're home. If the temperature is down, 
if you are out. And so they can serve you the right ad. And they will make trillions of dollars by just knowing your location. So they gave $2 billion to this company. Because it's much not the famous that this whole idea of that we are now having a data about the people's habits. They are they're spending time, what they need, what the requirements are. So everything in our home will be automated. And you will feel that it is good that I can change the thermostat step from my office, my home to my step. But all you are doing is providing some information to Google. And um, and so this cartoon says that, look, I got the right ad. You know, It looks like they want to sell me a fire alarm because there must be something at my home. All right? And so that's where the money is data. And um, so while in this course we will not talk about the data part of it, we will talk about mostly the mostly the the communication part of it, how to communicate this information. But each of these devices will generate data that has to be communicated. So we'll talk about that communication part. But there is a lot of venture activities. So in, in 2013 1.1 billion dollars and you know, and so on and so forth. Now they're just going up. Every time you look up, and if you every time you look up for how much VC investment, it's just going up. Now what can you buy? You can buy that thermostat, of course. And I wouldn't buy that one. It's just too expensive for me. Hundred fifty-two dollars for thermostat, which cost me twenty bucks. The last device. Two hundred fifty dollars. I don't know. There must be some crazy people there. But anyway, so two hundred fifty dollars. There is a, this looks like a band-aid, but it monitors your heart. Demo, this is something that you can connect and, and basically we have it in our lab. Touch tracker, media blocks, basically this allows you to remotely control things. The home automation, and then this is basically a software that people who want to design things they will buy, things like application platform. This is a cloud platform, again the platform. And this is another platform for hardware development. And then there is Zively Remote Access API. This is simply an API. So this is uh, some of these things are designed for the businesses, including this one. It is a processor especially designed for IoT. And this is the framework. So there are all kinds of companies working on this. Some have a product for the customer, for the consumer, and some have the product for the companies that make those things. <coughs> 